Thank you. The second speaker is Anna Gonzalez. <laughs> Anna Gonzalez, seeking love, seeking love, Anna Gonzalez. Love is a tricky thing, isn't it? There are many types of love, right? We have love for your family, love for your partner, love for your friends. And the most important thing, and the thing I want to talk about is love for what you do and do what you love. Good evening, everybody. Church, Toastmasters, uh, fellow Toastmasters and guests. I've been in my search for love for quite a bit. And I like everything I do. Sometimes because of that, I do quite a bit of things. I'm doing every, a lot of things in the amount of time that I can manage. So my doctors and all the doctors I have seen, they all agree in one thing. They all agree on that I do not know how to relax, that I do not know how to relax. And I'm always surprised and I'm like, I'm a very chill person. How come I don't know how to relax? But they all insist. I do have a big amount of anxiety and stress. And I suppose that comes inside so people cannot see it. Sometimes I don't even see it. But it's true. I can't stay still. And it's kind of difficult sometimes. So on this quest for relaxation, for being more relaxed, I try some things. The first one, I try yoga. I try yoga and in the classes of yoga, everybody seems so elegant, moving here and there, flexing their legs on the floor. And I, <laughs> I realize I have no balance. So I'm trying to flex and I can't, then my knees hurt. And I'm trying to put more padding things so I, my knee won't be on the floor directly. I'm a competitive person, I like to win. And in these scenarios, I just get more stressed than ever. I look at everybody and I think, what? How does she do it? How can she flex her leg like this? And why I can't? Why can't I go do this and stand still? So you know, it was not for me. Yes, it wasn't. I tried the next good thing that was recommended, which was going to the sauna. You don't have to do anything, no flexing. You just sit and relax. And I thought, well, that sounds pretty straightforward. I can do it. So I did. I went to an all female like, gym which had a, a sauna. So I was there in the sauna. And then I realized that you go naked in the sauna. <laughs> I didn't know that. So I was sitting in the sauna and wondering, should I take my, my towel off? I was a little too shy. And I think I don't know people looking at me. And then were the ladies coming in. And they were like with the towels, right? They were with the towels getting into the sound, not talking. And I go, oh, cool. The towel is cool. I feel we are connected, not on the same page. And then we're getting like, hey, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and I was surprised. And one lady, keep in mind, I was sitting there. One lady came and asked me. I was with my towels here. She said, can I sit over there? And I was thinking, wonderful, yes, of course. I mean, I thought she's with the towel, I'm the towel, we could maybe be some friends. <laughs> and I was already picturing a friendship of some friends. And she came and said, oh, great. Oh, 
whole neck, the whole body. And I was sitting there thinking, do I look? I was like, yeah, you guys sit here. Do I look? If I look, I said, yeah, that's yeah. If I don't look, if I don't look, am I being rude? I don't know. I was like, she was talking to me. Oh, what do you think? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was sitting there thinking, oh, yeah, yes, yes, of course. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It was stressful. <laughs> it was not for me. I quit on, on the sauna. I'm not a sauna person. Do not invite me to naked saunas, please. <laughs> the next thing I tried, the last thing I tried, were massages. I felt great, right? Because it's exactly what I need. And I'm all around trying massages. And then one day I was out of work. I tried many things, I didn't find the right person. I didn't find, I didn't, I didn't click with anybody, I didn't click, I didn't feel in love with the muscles and the, the technique and everything. One day I was close to my office and I went to this masseuse, a blind woman. They are known for having other uh, parts of the body more uh, accentuated than the side because they don't have it. So she went on, I was doing her body because I'm too shy still, I was shy. She was doing her body and I was like, yes, great. She's good, she's excellent. She's got these magic fingers, you know? She touches you and you are good to go. One day she asked me, have you ever tried a full body massage? And I said, I don't need that. Full body is so awkward, be naked. First, second, full body, double time, double price. And I said, no, my stress is here. And she, with her magic fingers, touched me on my back. And I was like, whoa. She touched me here, somewhere there. And I was like, oh my God, I was in heaven. With her magic fingers, I was transported. I loved her. She was the love of my life, the person I was looking for my whole life. <laughs> Sometime later, I came back, a lot of time later, and I went to her. She wasn't there anymore. She left, and I started asking people there, where is she? Please give me her number, give me everything. Where is she? Where did she go? I thought we had something going on. I thought it was real. <laughs> They told me she went for family issues and they thought I was kind of weird because I was asking for too, ma too many numbers, address and everything. And she, they didn't give me her number. They thought I was a stalker. <laughs> maybe, maybe I was a lesbian in love with her or something. I didn't find her anymore. And until now, I am still looking for this true love. So my takeaways are three. First, do what you love and love what you do. The second one, once you find a good masseuse, please keep it. And the third one, and if you do find it, and if you do know, let me know. I'm going to be over there after the speech. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the next speaker is Ekaterina Dimon. Ekaterina <laughs> Dimon, she was a phobia. Gilata phobia and how to deal with it. Gilata phobia and how to deal with it. Ekaterina Dimon. Hi guys. 
Do you know what Yamaka Koi Day is? Does anybody know? We know. Well, I didn't know either. <laughs> you know. Please tell. <laughs> Next time. I don't know it's weird. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I'm going to, for somebody who don't know, who doesn't know, so I'm going to tell. Um, I didn't know before I decided to find out what is wrong with my sense of humor. Uh, and I found out that damaged sense of humor and bad sense of humor, it's kind of side effect of Gelopaphobia. Here's my story. When I was writing this story, I was thinking it's kind of funny. Let's check it out, right? I grew up in Soviet Union time. Some of you who remember that time probably remember that uh, it was a school uniform, very uh, you know, inspiring, colorful, black, black, black and men in black, right? Black dress and apron. And at my school, we also had to wear uh, sport, uh, some uniform for sport education lessons. And for outdoor activities, we should wear track suits and for indoor classes, it was shorts and t-shirts, shorts and t-shirts. And it's kind of exciting too, right? But it was exciting only for people who look like Bobby and Ken. And it wasn't me. Right, uh, because uh, you know all the shots, even the biggest side, uh, suddenly like on a drum bursting on the scenes. Really, I was embarrassed all the time. And uh, also in my school, we had in any school in Russia, actually in Soviet Union time, we had a kind of ghetto physical exam, and um, it included three theoretical tests. And every time when I, it seems to me that everything in this world makes sense, I'm just thinking about theoretical part of physical education test, seriously. But anyway, and also it included 22 physical competitions, such as uh, rock climbing, climbing over the bar, over the horse, and so long jumps and so on. So I was a kind of star, you know, look at me, yeah, do you believe? I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding because I wasn't, I failed all the time in any competition. But today I want to tell you about uh, jumping over the crossbar because I still have a nightmare about it. So just imagine this picture, me standing in the corner of this uh, big hall, sports hall, and people around my classmates and coach uh, cheer me up, uh, shouting, Katya, come on, you can do it, just do it, let's go. And in my mind, only one thought, seriously, shots, how I can do it, God, please help me. And, but I still shoot to jump, right? And uh, I started to run and then to accelerate. It looked like I had, remember, in these shots, in these wonderful shots. And just before the bar, I heard a crack. <laughs> and it was a sound, not only uh, the falling bar, but it was only a sign, kind of, you know. And you probably guessed, uh, my shots just bursting, was bursting on me and literally ripped off. I looked around, people around me were, laughing, holding their stomach with laughter. And I didn't know what to do. And I said, okay, I'm going to laugh and cry at the same time. And I was doing exactly this. And uh, probably I would um, known as a girl who can't just jump over the crossbar, if not for one case. Uh, there was a warehouse next to our school. Uh, surrounded by fence and uh, guarded by an evil dog, really evil. Everybody, including me, was afraid of him. It was terrible. And um, normally, the fence gate was closed, but not one day. 
So I was uh, passing by as a gay, and um, suddenly this wonderful angry little dog ran out and uh, attacked me, literally attacked. So at first I was afraid, I was petrified, <laughs> and the second uh, I just flew up and found myself behind the fence. Right, uh, so of course I freaked out, first thing, and people who followed me, by the way, some guys followed me, they were stunned, really stunned. And because of this scene, I recovered, I have recovered from this wonderful guilt of them. Seen people, uh, my classmates stopped laughing at me. And uh, by the way, guiltophobia uh, is a kind of uh, psychological stuff when you um, uh, appear as a um, kind of uh, a ridiculous object in front of people. And uh, I fixed this, yeah, have recovered. And I hope my uh, sense of humor recovered too, didn't it? <laughs> and uh, as a conclusion, I have a message for you. If people around say or think that, that you are not capable of do something or do anything, don't believe because you have just had no chance to prove otherwise. Thank you for listening. Hello, dear Toastmasters. Very nice to see you all. Hi, online audience. I'm working at my very first place online, and it bothers me a lot. So I have a question for you. Do you feel comfortable about attending our meetings online? <laughs> Shall we? That's okay. Yeah. You like being online? Not for me. So, what if... You know, all the Toastmasters here are brilliant speakers, I hope their stories are wonderful, but what if, if the speech is a little bit boring? You can just move away from your computer and nobody will recognize your disappearance. <laughs> On the other side, what if the performance? On the stage is resting, and you are looking forward to move into the story, but the speaker is too involved into the topic that he totally forgets what he was saying. Being closer to the microphone. <laughs> That's a drawback when you miss something. I mentioned my previous job, a teacher of mathematics, in previous speeches. There were a lot of funny stories. For, for example, the ninth graders who were smoking in the bathroom. Shocking for me. In their ages. I did it on the 
it's too much shoes, you know, when the <laughs> is over and you have only this stick. <laughs> You're smoking it in an actual cigarette and it feels so cool. Do you remember the girl who was persistently trying to follow my Instagram with inappropriate copyright photos in bikini? Do you remember the boy with the toy of a minion? This toy started to jump and sing a song during the explanation. All of this stuff is not the natural reason why I did it. It just, I decided that it's just a time to move on into the IT field. So what do I have now? Instead of inspired, interested, motivated, places of students, not all the time, of course, it's still mathematics. I saw black two stores every single day. Well, I'm working online. When I was in high school, my mom always asked me why I didn't have work. I answered that all the boys around were too young. I will go to Joe and find a great fiance there. <laughs> Maybe it's not my destiny to become a programmer one day. <laughs> Why not? Now I just don't know how to choose. Among the great variety of handsome, intelligent, and smart black Zoom windows. <laughs> the only way to await men is by voice, no? At the same time, carefully catching each sound of his possible wife. Coming out, <laughs> coming out from the kitchen in the background. The working day usually starts at nine. Do you have any guesses what time I usually wake up? Eight fifty-five. Eight fifty-five. Yeah, eight fifty-seven. Just two minutes before before the meeting. With colleagues, we usually uh, call up in Zoom. My off style includes slippers. Pajamas, yeah. glasses, continental glasses, yeah. Great. So with colleagues, we usually call up and Zoom, but it's not comfortable at all. Uh, and I haven't used such a device to communicate, so, such a way of communication as a simple mobile phone for a long time, for job. Usually only family members call me by mobile. So what? There, there was a call on my mobile during the working day. I thought it was my mom asking for something like delivery in libraries because as for her, working from home is similar thing to having a lot of free time to do some domestic stuff, to go shopping, go libraries, Amazon, and so on. Uh, but now it was a system analyst from the office who discussed some business, business issues and at the end of the conversation I said, well, I get it, okay, why kiss you? <laughs> what? He is you? <laughs> oh my god! But I can explain. I can explain. What's the reference? Only mountain. Very smart. But you can call me by mobile. And at the end of the conversation, I usually give them a virtual kiss. Very simple. I like that this colleague who was involved in this uncomfortable situation. It's far away from me in another he's working from another city, as well as my boss. So he wouldn't be able to yell right into my face. The other reflex that let me down is a habit to change passwords. I was given a system administrator account to access the database. For several, for several days I was Working there and everything was great, but once I saw a magic button on the counter. Reset password. I know that it was forbidden for me, but the reflex works great. And instead of one, two, three, four, Q, R, V, F, T, exclamation mark, I put a password that I came up with like 10 years ago, you know, and still use it in all services. So the whole system was broken. Very funny story. This why I'm laughing at this. That's okay. So to sum up, I want 
to tell you all to love your job. Even if you're working online in humorous IT field with high level of stress, try to treat every awkward question with humor. It will make your life much more enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you, Valine. Minute of silence for the judges. Last but not the least, speaker is Tatiana Gorsh. Tatiana Gorsh. River. River. Tatiana Gorsh. Dear Madam Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests. I'm sure all of you know what the thriller is. You may have watched or read a thriller. I have to tell you that this is my favorite movie genre. And tonight I'm going to tell you how I have taken a part in a real thriller and not by my own choice. The story happened to me wasn't the most pleasant experience. And later when I got the presence of my mind back and I realized what happened, I actually came to the conclusion that I have a reason to be proud of myself. So let me give you a few useful tips you might want to utilize if you find yourself in this odious but very possible situation. Let's start with the beginning. Imagine beautiful sunset in Eastern Africa. White sand, pink clouds, warm ocean, Two happy girls are walking along the beach, talking about the dinner they had been planning to have that night with their fellows. Those two are my friend and me having a vacation in Mombasa, Kenya. Here, I have to mention that we were warned by several people about a danger of being after a daylight on that beach. But a cakewalk along the gorgeous waves was too attractive to resist temptation. On that beach, there always were people who were jogging, stretching, exercising, and that, that was quite strange for us to observe such an intense sport activity in, in a resort city, but it didn't seem to surprise anyone else. Suddenly, one guy, dressed like a jogger, passed us by, turned around and pulled a knife. It was big like this. That very moment, I dramatically expanded my horizon, my knowledge in edged weapon. We were, we were facing a real machete. The guy started screaming, give me your phones, money or phones, money or phones. My friend had a small purse with her with personal belongings, so she gave it to a guy. Here, I would like to declare lesson number one I learned that night. While on vacation and out of your room, do not carry with you more than you can afford to lose. No person, no expensive jewelry, no documents, no other significant items must be taken. Then it was my turn to give away. I had a purse with me, all opened it, 
found a cheap $20 cell phone. It was not even a smartphone, but a touchstone, and I gave it to the guy. Then we noticed people started screaming, and our robber ran away with his trophies. Later, my friend asked me, how come you give just one cheap cell phone and I lost everything? I replied to her that I was listening carefully to what the guy said. He didn't say money and phone, but he said money or phone. <laughs> and I wasn't kidding. I wasn't kidding. These small words can make a difference. Here, I'd like to <laughs> announce my rule number two. Do not panic. Listen carefully to what the thieves want. <laughs> Most of the times, they are even more scared than you are. So presence of your mind is important. Later, <laughs> by the way, if there are no people around, screaming may not be a good idea. It can make your robbers angrier and the situation goes even worse. But if you do see people around, do it. Scream as loud as possible. Later, we were sitting in a restaurant with our friends, telling them our thriller story. And it sound a bit scarier. Now, when I see my African body, we also always remember that story. We, but it sounds like an adventure now. We are laughing at each other. We have fun. When that happened, did we get stressed? Oh yeah, we did. <laughs> did that situation ruin our future travel plans? No, it never will. It just confirmed my rule number three. If anything like that has ever happened or will happen to you, do not waste your time enjoying st stressful moment. Learn your lesson and move on. Hey, a lot of wonderful, amazing, pleasant adventures are waiting for you. So I hope, <laughs> I hope that tonight you have learned that if you find yourself in a dangerous situation, how do not lose three very important things. Personal belongings, presence of your mind, the most important, sense of humor, <laughs> travel, experience new emotions, and enjoy your life. Thank you, Tatiana. A moment of silence for the judge.
So I would like to say thank you to all the contestants. Now the chief judge and I will go to count the ballots, the, the points in the ballots, and Anna will continue with okay, the I will topics and yes. and what First of all, I will want to thank Marina and Yuri for doing this great job for the contest. We'll see them while announcing the results. And I have a <laughs> an announcement. Okay, so today we have troubles with the room and the organizers, they ask us to leave, to move to another room because they are in answer right now. So, now we are having a break now, right? Do we have any steps? Over there. Okay, I think we can stay here, enjoy our snacks um, while we have a, the break. We'll just uh, have, have some alternating. And then we'll just go to the next room and take seats there. Unfortunately, we'll have to say goodbye to our online friends because we won't have time to set the set the camera there we'll just okay guys don't take offense alina and daniel so we have to say goodbye to you daniel, daniel even put <laughs> 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 so i'm very sorry for this so you can enjoy the snacks you can uh, we don't have a chance <laughs> yes. Shall I say about the hundred people? Yeah. About the donation. Shall I say that? Well, we have a box. If you want, you can donate one hundred for the snacks. One hundred rubles. So somewhere will be. Enjoy the snacks. Relax. Uh, make friends. Yes, and we'll see each other in ten minutes. In which room? It's the next room. But well, we're in the room. Uh, yes, we're right off, here. So we're here. <laughs> what else do we have after the break? Table topics. Short table. So we need the time to uh, yes, the and, uh, yes. Uh, so the results and then table topic. No, table topic and results. Uh -huh. okay. No, yes, we
So we have to uh, we have to replace uh, we have change uh, the room. So это местный. А вот а, блок питания можно туда в туалет, мы оттуда брали, потому что этот а, пытались зарядить его никак. Блок питания можно туда внести. Не будем? А, окей. Тогда мы можем выключить, да, наверное, здесь и запись остановить? Да. Окей. Okay.